Hey, I've gotten several questions about how this viewport responsive Rive artwork actually works. And so uh, I'm going to let you see a little behind the scenes of how this is set up. One of the first things that's important to know is that this is a Rive canvas that doesn't change size. So it's 1500 wide by 1000 high. Um, and in fact, I think if I yeah make it a little bit bigger, you can actually see the edges of it here. Um, but it's listening for the viewport size in the JavaScript code, and then setting some number inputs accordingly. And that is within the RI file is set up to scale the artwork. So I'll show you what I mean inside of Rive. So here's the file that we were just looking at. You can see I've got the white border here and there are bones for each corner. And that is actually how the um, states are set up. So for width, you can see they kind of collapse into the middle for width zero, sorry, they collapse in the middle with 1500 is when they're all the way out to the end. So I'm going to use a blend state to blend in between those. Same for the height. I've got one where they're all keyed to a height of zero in the middle of the artboard and um, all the way out to um, a thousand height at the outsides of the artboard. And then um, in the state machine, I'm using blending layers. So I've got the blend from 1500 to zero. And you can see when I hit play, it jumps to 1200 because that's what the value was at. And uh, as I scroll that value, it's going to change the size of the box and the artwork also uh, moves accordingly. And uh, same will happen with the height. And then there's a listener inside the artboard for the eyes. So um, the way to keep that accurate to the actual pixel dimensions of the viewport is to make sure to use this reset layer next to it. So for width, when it's uh, going in between, I've got the uh, width zero and width 1500 states. Uh, those timelines are here. Um, you need to add the your zero state in a timeline on a layer to the left of your blend state layer. And then I have the same thing here for height. So I've got my height blend, and then I have a height reset layer with the height zero uh, timeline there just needs to go from entry to to play that um, blinks is its own timeline right that's just going to keep the character blinking um, the face i did add um, several different sizes of faces just to get a little bit more control over how that face transitioned um, in between different states uh, and sizes and then uh, the third eye is this just has a listener so it says uh, when the width input gets above 1200 it's going to turn on and it'll turn back off when it gets under 1200. So that is how all that works. And so the JavaScript code is, again, just listening for the viewport size, uh, the window of the browser, and then setting that as the value of these inputs. So it sets the width value here and the height value here. And that is what keeps it uh, at the correct size. And um, unfortunately, you can see like you always get the same amount of border here because if it's in, unless I go too big, um, but you can see, yeah, it just stays uh, lined up perfectly with it because of that listener. Um, so that is how that's set up. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, if, you're, if anybody wants a more in-depth tutorial, let me know. Um, I could go into the, the JavaScript code that's making it work and maybe some other tips about how I scaled some of the parts of the face along the way, or even how to keep UI elements kind of uh, tucked into a corner of the window, something like that. How do you how do you make sure to scale things appropriately with using those bones to, to drive the size of things? So, there you go.